morning. The first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 41, starting at verse 1 through 10. Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Let the peoples renew their strength. Let them approach, let them speak. Let us draw near for judgment. Who has rousted a victor from the east? Summon him to his service. He delivers up nations to him and tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his sword, like driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them and passes on safely, scarcely touching a path with his feet. Who has performed and done this, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am first and will be the last. The coastlands have seen and are afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have drawn near and come. Each one helps the other, saying to one another, take courage. The artisan encourages the goldsmith, and the one who smooths with a hammer encourages the one who strikes the anvil. Saying of the soldering, it is good, and they fasten it with nails so that it cannot be moved. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. The next reading is a rather familiar one from Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And the third reading is from Ephesians chapter 1 starting at verse 11 through verse 23. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the wording of his great power? God put this power to work in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, 
and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, empty me of me and fill me with you so that the words of my mouth are only yours spoken through me. Lord, open the ears of the hearers here today that they may hear what it is you are calling on their hearts to take from your message into the world and into their community. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. In an article, psychologist Steve Taylor says, the need for purpose is one of the defining characteristics of human beings. Human beings crave purpose and suffer serious psychological difficulties when they don't have it. Purpose is a fundamental component of a fulfilling life, says Steve Taylor. These days, there are more self-help books than ever before, most claiming to help you find happiness. Because the self-help ideas never actually find a way to give you purpose in life, people are seeking new ways to fill that void. So many in our society are trying to find meaning in social causes. They participate in passive online activism, this is a main reason we are seeing more of this divisiveness in our world. The problem is, though, that despite any efforts they put forth, they still lack purpose and find themselves empty, depressed, and anxiety-driven. In today's Bible passage, we read that those who are in Christ are destined for a purpose. By breaking down this passage from Ephesians, we will reveal the purpose that all Christians have been called into. The purpose that our confirmands will be choosing today to be a part of. The passage read from Ephesians opens in a bit of an awkward spot. It comes just after the author expresses God's plan that all of creation, that all people are to be brought into the kingdom. You see, as it says, in Christ we have been destined for a purpose that he wills for us. But what does that purpose look like? Well, the rest of the pa passage begins to lay out those details that we need in order to understand. First, we are to live for God's glory, not our own. This is hard to do. It means we have to choose to find purpose in serving the good of the whole rather than ourselves. It means not taking the easy road through passive activism that expects miracles without a God and then lashes out when results don't turn out as expected. It means choosing to love all people despite their race, gender, political affiliation, or personal ideologies. Love is what this author sees in those who are fulfilling their purpose in Christ. This love is that which Jesus spoke about in the passage from Matthew. If we are in Christ, we are called to follow Christ's commands, the command to love God and love neighbor. To sum it up, Love is necessary to fulfill God's purpose for the body of Christ, or the church, as we like to call it. It is necessary to display if all people, if all creation are to be brought into God's kingdom. Now there's more to fulfilling our purpose in Christ. To help us love, we can follow another detail that's given here, to pray for the spirit of wisdom that provides revelation for our specific purpose in a smaller, localized community. 
In other words, when we pray for wisdom and revelations, we are asking God to reveal our smaller community's more specific purpose. Now, as I mentioned last week, this church's vision statement was a revelation to this community given by God to live out their ultimate purpose in Christ. It was a more detailed way of how we are specifically called to love and further God's kingdom here. It reveals the purpose that these confirmands will be choosing to be a part of today. The spirit of wisdom also acknowledges another important aspect of our destined purpose in Christ, which is the recognition to trust in God's ultimate power at work. Now, this doesn't mean we will ever under, fully understand God's ways because God's ways are beyond our comprehension. However, we recognize that we trust in God's ultimate plan to bring all of creation, to bring all people into Christ's kingdom. For it is in following our purpose and trying to continually seek this purpose in the ways that we just detailed that will, as it says, complete Christ. Now to say the church completes Christ means acknowledging an uncomfortable aspect of the body of Christ. We have to admit that the universal church throughout the ages has made many ungodly decisions. We can't help but recognize this in the Crusades, in the forced conversions like that of the Native Americans, in the support of slavery, and the oppression of women and the LGBT communities. So how does the church, the body of Christ, made up of imperfect people, and the body to which these confirmands would like to be a part of, complete Christ? Well, the answer is in what we just said. We pray for that spirit of wisdom and revelation, and as good Presbyterians, we do this by being reformed and constantly reforming ourselves. We do this so that our eyes be made clear to God's ways. Good news, confirmands. And good news to you, body of believers. What this is saying is that the purpose of the church is to be the avenue that strives continually to know and reveal Christ better. In other words, it is to seek new loving ways to be the voice and hands of God and to be that beacon on the hill that God has called this specific body of believers to be. We must, though, acknowledge that we are flawed human beings, and we won't always get it right, but we will still continue to strive in seeking our purpose in Christ. The reality is that those who choose to respond to God's call on their lives have been given a gift, the gift of a purposeful life. A gift of purpose that most people are searching for, but many have not found because they are looking in all the wrong places. We see this evident in the fact that that new atheist movement is dying out because once people got over their instigation because they failed to provide a purpose and meaning in people's lives and they turn to new ways and they're turning to even more new ways to seek purpose in their lives. People are seeking to find purpose and meaning through contributing to or volunteering for political action committees by clicking the like on the media that feeds into their biases or by getting in online arguments that seek to shame, harm, or dehumanize other human beings. The problem is, if your purpose is not driven by God's call, then you're following your own plan, not God's. And the results will be hollow and unsatisfying. You will know this if your path leads you down, and a path of anger and hatred and resentment towards your fellow man, or worse, propensity to violence. We saw countless examples of this in 2019, and I am sad to say that we're likely to see more of it in 2020 as society further secularizes and seeks meaning through grievances and divisive categorization. 
Ultimately, we won't be happy until we find true purpose. We'll never find true purpose unless we open ourselves up to the Spirit. We'll never find purpose by ourselves because we are too small and our perspective is too limited. Instead, we must choose to find our purpose in God's perfect will, just like the compromands have made the choice to do. Now, the work of discernment is difficult. And God's plan may lead us to put aside some of our deep-seated beliefs, as well as leading us down uncomfortable paths we never thought we would take. But may we remember the words offered by this author of Ephesians that are ones that call us to live into our purpose. A purpose to further God's kingdom here by displaying love to all people, by choosing to hope in trusting in God's ultimate plan, by praying for revelations that help us understand God's specific call on our lives and in this community, and by continually praying for wisdom to correct the mistakes that are made along the way. May we always remember that we are destined for a purpose-filled life and have been given the gift of knowing our purpose in Christ. Let us seek to lovingly share that gift of purpose with all people we encounter. For the sake of the gospel and the sake of the world. Amen. And now I would invite the compromands to come forward as well as the clerk and Reverend Edmund Freeborn. Uh, you probably saw that he was here. This, for those of you who don't know, this is our former minister here, um, but I had asked him to be a part of today because there's a point in the service that I will invite the session and the families to come forward to lay on of hands, and at that point I just wanted to be mom. We rejoice that you are ready to declare your own faith journey and participate in our common ministry. I invite you to come over with me and touch the waters of baptism. And remember, go ahead, put your hand in it. And remember that you are named and claimed by God and sealed by God's Spirit. I'll go back over here. In baptism, you were joined to Jesus Christ and made members of his body. In the faith community, you have learned God's purpose for you and all of creation. You have been fed at the table of our Lord and are called to speak of the good news of belonging and salvation. Now, as we learn in Ephesians 2, you are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself, as the cornerstone. Now I will ask you a series of questions and I would ask that you would answer them. Trusting in God's love, grace, and mercy, do you turn away from sin and all powers in the world which work against God's righteousness and love? If so, say I do. Do you choose to be faithful followers of Christ, accepting him as your highest authority and following his commands and teaching? If so, say we will. Will you choose to commit yourself to the body of Christ and practice your faith in the community? If so, say, we will. Will you commit yourself to prayer, sacrament, service, and sharing your gifts generally? If so, say, we will. Will you respect the decisions of the, these youth to... Oh, I'm sorry. This is to the congregation. I'm just loving it. To the congregation of the East Stroudsburg Presbyterian Church and to those who are present. Will you respect the decisions of these youth to commit themselves to serving God through Christ's church? If so, say, we will. We will. 
Will each of you act as a sponsor to them, participate with you, calling them by name, encouraging their adult participation in the faith community, answering their questions with your own experience, and holding them in prayer? If so, say, we will. Together as the Church of Jesus Christ, let us stand and speak what we believe as members of Christ's body by using the Confession of Faith from the Belhar Confession that is found printed in the bulletin. We believe that God has entrusted the church with a message of reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ, that the church is called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, that the church is called blessed because it is a peacemaker, that the church is witness both by word and by deed to the new heaven and the new earth in which righteousness dwells that God's life-giving word and spirit has conquered the powers of sin and death, and therefore also of irreconciliation and hatred, bitterness and enmity, that God's life-giving word and spirit will enable the church to live in new obedience, which can open new possibilities of life for society and the world. That the credibility of this message is seriously affected and it is beneficial work obstructed when it, when it is proclaimed in a land which professes to be Christian, but in which the enforced separation of people on racial basis promotes and perpetuates alienation, hatred, and enmity. That any teaching which attempts to legitimate such forced separation by appeal to the gospel and is not the road of and reconciliation, but rather out of the prejudice, fear, and selfishness, and unbelief, denies in advance the reconciling power of the gospel, must be considered ideology and false doctrine. Therefore, we reject any doctrine which in a situation sanctions the name of the gospel or the will of God. The forced separation of the people on the grounds of race and color, and thereby in advance obstructs and weakens the ministry and experience of reconciliation in Christ. At this point, I would invite the currently serving session members to come forward, and Joyce, I would invite you to come forward for Caillou. I just want to share, at the bottom of my heart, Kai, I'm going to ask you to kneel right here, that this has been an amazing experience with these confirmands, and Joyce, you have done a wonderful job. You should be proud. Kai is an amazing being, and he is ready to serve in God's family. If you would like to all come forward and lay hands on Caillou, we will pray over him. Loving God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as our, your own. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. By your grace, we are made holy like you are holy. Hi, the covenant you established before you were born and marked for your baptism. I strengthen, I ask for strengthen for you to work, to do the work you are called to do. Send him out by the power of your spirit and love and serve you with joy and to work for the justice and shalom in all the earth. Daily increase Kai with your gifts of grace, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and the reverence of the Lord. The spirit of joy in you is present, both now and forevermore. Amen. And now, Kai and Joyce, if you'd like to step to the side, and Kylie, would you please kneel? I would invite Chris to come forward and Ed to take it over. <laughs> Let us gather to lay hands. Let us pray. 
Loving God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be your servants in the world. By your grace, we are made holy like you are holy. In you and Kylie, the covenant you established before she was born and marked in her baptism. Strengthen Kylie for the work you call her to do. Send her out by the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to work for justice and shalom in all the earth. Daily increase in her your gifts of grace, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and the reverence of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forevermore. Amen. Mom and Dad, well done. Good and faithful <laughs> servants. Thank you. Kai and Kylie, you've done a lot of work, and I'm very proud of you. So by confirming the faith nurtured in you by those who are close to you, by this community and the greater church, you have expressed your intention to grow in the relationship offered to you by God. We are eager to work with you in mission and in ministry, and we value the gifts and ideas you bring with you. Remember your baptism every day, and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work within each of you, and that we will continue to support and nurture you. Let us all pray together using the prayer that which can be found on the insert of the bulletin. O oh God, our Father, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number of brothers and sisters in the faith. Together we may live in your spirit and so the love of one another and the pattern of our minds of Jesus Christ, our Lord. To whom we can give honor and glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> 